Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Michael Zappa, Chief of Emergency Services at Cape Fear Valley Health. As you can see, our COVID pandemic continues and it's brought some changes even to our health system. First off, I'm sure you noticed that I was wearing a mask and goggles. Every time you come to a patient care area in our hospital now, you will find all our staff covered with their protective equipment, such as a mask and goggles. This is twofold. This is to keep them safe and to keep you safe as a patient. We're fortunate that we have large capacity to handle patients coming in and we have the resources to take care of you. The pandemic continues to grow. In the United States, we now have over 240,000 cases with over 5,400 deaths. In North Carolina, we have over 2,000 cases with 19 deaths. Cumberland County, fortunately, has only had 35 cases so far and no deaths. Why does this disease continue to spread so easily? There are a few reasons for that. This virus is particularly contagious. As a community, as a country, we're not real good with hand washing. We keep touching our face before we wash our hands. We don't want to stay six feet away from anyone. We still continue to gather in crowds and we're not diligent about cleaning hard surfaces. Surfaces that are touched frequently need to be cleaned thoroughly and every 30 minutes in order to keep this epidemic, this pandemic under control. Because you, the community, have listened, that gives us the capacity to take care of more patients. You're only coming to the hospital when it's an actual emergency. So with COVID-19, what are the symptoms that should bring you to the hospital? Well, if you have a fever, if you have a severe cough, and you're experiencing trouble breathing, if you feel short of breath, you should come to the hospital. If you're not in extreme distress, we advise that you call 615-LINK before coming. They can confirm that you need hospital-based care, and they'll give us a call and let us know that you're coming. But don't forget, there are many other emergencies that require treatment at the hospital. Don't ignore your chest pain. Don't ignore symptoms of a stroke, such as weakness or dizziness. And of course, we are always here to take care of you if you're in an accident. Even if you listen to all of our recommendations and that of the state and the federal government and the CDC, of course, there are times when you have to go out. So how do you go out safely? First of all, if you are a member of a high-risk group, you should not go out. As we previously discussed, most of us, most of the population, if they get the coronavirus, will do just fine. But there's a small percentage of the population, the elderly, and those with chronic diseases and immune suppression that the coronavirus could prove fatal for them. If you're in this high-risk group, please stay home. Have your groceries delivered. But if you're not in that high-risk group and you have to go to the grocery store or the drugstore, how do you do that safely? Well, you should first try to cluster all your chores so you're not going out multiple times during the day. When you go out, be prepared with your hand sanitizer or sani wipes. Wash your hands frequently in between each encounter, each trip in and out of a store where you're touching doors or carts or the groceries themselves. Consider wearing a cloth mask. This will help protect you in case someone who is less than six feet away from you happens to cough or sneeze. But I want to emphasize the six foot rule. A mask, a cloth type mask, is not a substitute for the six foot rule. 
So just because you have on a mask doesn't mean you can gather as a large group together. One of the most important things to remember about this pandemic is it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. There are many models out there trying to predict when our area of the country will get its largest surge. Some say it's the end of this month. Some say it's not till June. No way for us to know for sure. But what we do have to do is continue our vigilance and our preparation. We need to stay home whenever possible. We need to wash our hands frequently. We need to keep our hands away from our face. We need to help the elderly and those with chronic illnesses. If we do all this, we will make it through this pandemic.